uh, friends, it's indeed my privilege to introduce to you Jürgen Mohart, whom, of course, you know. He is our Consul General. Um, uh, I've known uh, Jürgen for many, many years because he used to be the German ambassador to Sri Lanka. And of course, you all know how close Sri Lanka is to my heart. And so from that angle, naturally, uh, also Jürgen uh, is close to my heart. And as he may share with you, I'm the culprit why he basically came to India uh, from Sri Lanka. Uh, I told him and his wife that you have to come to Mumbai uh, because that's the best place to go after Sri Lanka, because that was also my experience. Now, Jürgen is an experienced uh, diplomat. Um, he started his diplomatic career basically in Japan. He uh, speaks fluent Japanese, but during his career, he was all over the world. He was in America, he was in Africa, he was in, in very different places. He was in Hong Kong. Um, and um, this experience, he now brings to the table as our Consul General in India. It is his last posting. So it is sort of the grande finale of his diplomatic career. Um, and from that angle, it is our advantage that we have such a seasoned diplomat with us. He is a hands-on man supporting uh, the German companies in India substantially. On the other hand, also helping Indian companies and Indian people with regard to their requirements in Germany. So from that angle, he is a fantastic diplomat and he's also a seasoned Rotarian. And he could tell you all about his Rotar Rotary career, if I may say so. Uh, and from that angle, it's a privilege for us, for the club, I have to say, to have him not only as a member, but today also as a speaker. And therefore now, Welcome, Jürgen, and I think the floor is yours. Back to Vicky. Dear Rotarian friends, dear Mr. Dear President, dear Bernhard, can you hear me well? Very well. Good. So thank you very much for inviting me and for, for having the idea of inviting me back. First of all, Bernhard, thank you very much for all the praise you have did. So dear Rotarian friends, you know that as Bernhard is retiring, what should I do now, right? I don't want to be alone here. That is why I'm also looking to the end of my career uh, very soon, because I think the most fantastic team I ever had in my life was me and Bernard here working together on the joint course of improving and, and even more deepening the Indo-German relations. So thank you very much for having me. As, as Bernard said, it, I'm, I'm a Rotarian. I had the privilege while I was in Germany on vacation, like Bernard is right now, to attend uh, Rotarian meetings in my own club, also giving a speech on India at that time again. And, and at that time, it was very strictly in, in, in a, also in a, in a hotel room, in a, in a hall of six people maximum per table, and tables were separated, the chairs were separated, and all the protocols. But nevertheless, despite all these efforts, Germany is back to uh, even more severe COVID crisis, the so-called second wave, and now all the restaurants and all the hotels, everything is closed, and we're having another closed lockdown, and also my uh, hometown Rotary club meetings are on, back to online again. I only want to congratulate this club to be so active. You have so many activities uh, that is really incredible. For me, who has to, to, to run an office, and, and this is my webinar number three today, it's just impossible to follow on, on all your events and, and to, ex, to do more. And I don't think that I'm going to volunteer for debate club. Thank you very much for giving me the kudos. I, I, I'm so busy, please, please understand. Then as you have Bernard here and the president made a remark, we don't have Christmas markets everywhere, but we have a Christmas markets also organized by Bernard. German Christmas market, India Digitalis, that maybe he could talk to you about it later and also introduce it to you because the non-existence of Christmas markets also in Germany and in France, that's also a very sad reality. All the things will be different this year. So it's always difficult to come here. It's not my, because you know, you have this Bernard, you have such a knowledgeable partner and, and, and member and fellow Rhetorian here. I, I always think he already told you everything. What, and I always was wondering, what could I tell you about? 
And I have also given some speeches before, but I was just try to give you some aspects on, on, on history and the history of the consulate. I will talk about young men going to Germany, Indian from Bombay. I will talk about two young men from Germany coming back here. I will talk about another young man going to US and still uh, and after coming back, building up a very successful company who has now a huge market share in India. And maybe we can focus then on the, the current affairs of cinema. I think it's good. Um, what, did I, what did I pick now? Now Bollywood. I just came up with the idea. Maybe we should put something in, in movies because in those times, many people are resorting to movies. Everybody's hooked to Netflix, see uh, Amazon Prime and the others. And I think it's a huge boom, maybe not in the cinemas, but everybody is is taking refuge in the evenings and during the daytime to watch more movies than ever. And of course, it's also a huge opportunity to watch Indian movies for us and my wife and really appreciate this opportunity and that also so many Indian movies are now today online available. But let me start first. So, you know, I think Bernard has talked a lot about economic relations, the German relations as such. And I had I did this and mentioned, you know, all about our partnerships. Uh, we had that, but I would like to go back a little bit to a kind of time, not back to Max Müller and the ideologists and all those things, no, no, but, but rather remembering the time between the wars where, where I think there was in the first half of the century, there was a pretty uh, close relationship between Calcutta, Bombay and, and, and Germany, in particular Berlin, because you all know that during the after the first one, the second one, it was a very special period, politically difficult, but culturally very rich in Berlin. And of course, it was politically difficult when the First World War came. And during that time, uh, a lot of German and German speaking refugees made Bombay their home. And they're resulting in an artistic, intellectual, and cultural renaissance. At that time, somebody has written a book, The Age of Entanglement Between the Two States. Very interesting to read. And, and uh, we could award a prize to that, but I don't want to get on this. But at, at that time, also Berlin became a scientific and cultural hub of Europe, and numerous Indian scientists were and artists visited and worked in, in, in Berlin. Among those, Dr. Homi Baba, who was the founder of the Tata Research Institute at that time, but also some filmmakers. I will come to this later on. And, uh, and then, because when the Second World War, just before the Second World War, we had a community which was maybe at that time very big, more than 2,000 foreigners being at uh, Bombay at that time, and more than one fourth of that time were Germans. Of course, when the war came, Second World War, things changed a little bit. Some had to leave, some had to be repatriated. And, but nevertheless, there was a huge influence of, of these foreigners who coming here. At that time, I was talking already about scientists, but also there were people here, like a so-called Mr. Walter Kaufmann and a scriptwriter Willi Haas, who were composing signature tunes for All India Radio at that time. They were introducing orchestral music uh, to Hindi films and documentary films, and, and the cartoonists have been here. And basically what they brought to India was this kind of artist school expressionism at that time. When it comes now to the official relay, relations, the German consulate in, in India goes back to the year 1856. At that time, it was uh, just Prussia, Prussia, uh, consulate of the state of, of Prussia by, with a British crown. And then later on in 1867, when Prussia was forming a union of northern states, consulate was a consulate of, of northern states. And later on, only in 1871, basically it became the German consulate when Germany united for the first time. Then the consulate has been here since, as I said, basically uh, since 1856. But of course, during the war times, it had to close down and was uh, some years of interruption, First World War, Second World War. But it reopened again since 1951. And I'm now one of the many, many consul channels who have been here. But I wanted to talk about at that time, in, in, in between the wars, there was a, a history about, of a young man from India, a young lawyer, actually, uh, and a movie lover, who in 1924 was traveling to, to Germany. And he had the, the idea that he would revolutionize something and would do his own movie. 
And uh, his idea was to do something on world religions. Very easy because you, you are the cradle of religions and no country has more religions and as, as India, of course. And he thought he should start with Christianity. For this reason, he traveled to a very small remote town in the German Alps called Oberammergau. Oberammergau is a very small village, but has a huge tradition in, in, in a amateur theater play, which in, in, in a regular tournament, the locals, all only locals in, in the village, uh, have bringing to stage basically the drama and the passion of, of Jesus Christ's life. So this young person, which is called Himansurai, was there and he saw it and said, oh my God, I have to do this. Uh, that is perfect. Where can I look for a partner? And close to Oberammergau and Bavarian Alp is Munich. He looked around in Munich and in Munich he found a small studio, which was called MLK at this time. And uh, he met them and tried to meet the owners. And coincidentally, like this Indian had the vision we have to introduce to India, new visionary fant fantasy like new places around the world in cinema. At that time in, in Germany and in other parts of the world, they were also looking for more exotic places. So because at that time, as I said, there was, was a lot of tensions in, in, inside in, 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 in Europe, economic misery from time to time. So everybody was looking for something special. And then at that time, you know, like exotic places, exotic story really found the market at that time. And now those four, Mr. Himansurai met at the studio, brothers, which were called Ostermeyer. And he tried to convince them to do something together. There was one movie before already in 1921 on, uh, on uh, uh, which was called The Indian Crave at that time, Indian Tomb, which was very successful. So the German partner said, no, no, we have to do something on India. That is our opportunity. And then the, the Indian, Mr. Rai and, and, and his partners decided to do something on Buddhism. And they said, let's go and do something on Buddhism. And they were really looking and, and excited to go on an expedition, joining Mr. Rai, going to India and try to do a movie there on Buddhism and the life of Buddha. And it was really something we could have to imagine at that time, everything was, was very difficult, uh, the technique which has to be used at, at, at that time and, and the, the circumstances to, to go around and, and have elephants and fancy dressed uh, actors all over. And, and of course the unused heat for the Germans at that time. And it was, of course, it was a challenge, but it succeeded. And this first movie, The Light of, uh, of India, basically became a huge success in, in, in Germany. So or The Light of Asia, it's, it's a Light of India, Light of Asia became a huge success of India, giving new insights into the Indian culture and religions. And even the British king uh, went to see it. After this movie together, Mr. Rai was so impressed that he returned to Berlin at that time, one of the cultural hubs, together with his wife and actress, Devi Karani. And they went to visit another studio in, in Berlin, which are still there today in, 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 in Potsdam area. And there they met huge the icons of German movie, Mrs. Marlene Dietrich. And they were trying to take acting classes at those years. And basically that is why by both of them got now a, a kind of formation skill training like we do today in, in acting. Mr. Himasurai then returned back to India and he decided to establish his own movie company. Full of energy, he established a movie house which you might all know, Bombi Talkies. When he started Bombi Talkies, he of course he recalled his partnership with uh, the Germans, um, the person he was talking to and it was his main partner and who did the movie in India was Mr. Franz Osten, one of, of three, three brothers. And he invited Mr. Osten to come him and join in as a partner. And indeed it was Mr. Osten with another crew and, and another person, Mr. Birschik, 
and some other technicians, they all came to uh, India to join Bombay Talkies. In a way, it's very interesting, I find out, because normally what I said from the beginning, what have people from Bavaria and India in common from, uh, in a very way, you know, the Alps, you know, Munich, Oktoberfest, you know, all have these images, the lakes, it's exotic for you. For Germans, India is exotic. I think both states, India and, and Bavaria at that time, present exotic landscape, exotic attractions. And which means at that time, they both are places where dream and reality could be mixed up easily. You could lose yourself in, in, in all these images, uh, narratives, and of course, of the music at the time, and uh, forget about the problems you were facing in politics and economy at that time. So both, I think, have been at that time perfect partners, movie partners, selling illusions from the way they are to, uh, to the audience. So well, as said, then in 1934, they started, and they started very successfully the house Bombay, uh, Bombay Talkies. Nobody knows that there's a long list, and, and for more than 15 years, Mr. Austin, Franz Austin, and his partner, Mr. Wirsching, made 15 new movies. Basically, all the first 15 movies of Bombay Talkies have been directed by this German. Uh, director, Mr. Austin. I don't want to give you all the names of, of those movies now, but it has to be in the start of a wonderful love affair of a German director and, and a Bombay moving house. So at that time also, he was accompanied by, by another cinematographer, Mr. Franz Wirsching who was with him here, not only from during the time of Mr. Austin from 1934 to 1939, but somebody who stayed later. And, and Mr. Austin himself had to return to, to war circumstances to, to Germany coming up the Second World War, he had to return. But basically this German team was very happy to be in India for the reasons I I told you, and then of course they can introduce new, new techniques, new ideas, new narratives, new scenes, everything in, into Indian movie. And at all that, that time, I also just learned it recently. All the Indian movie became different, and it tried to do to get independent from the influence of the British movie, and also showed at that time, which was not, normally never seen before. For example, demonstrations in a movie something social critical aspects in a movie which which was really unheard of and also it was this, this is germans at that time you could say the indian movies itself got a kind of independence from the huge influence of uk film industries at that time then of course i said uh, mr austin had to return mr wirsching stayed on and Mr. Wishing stayed on and he was continuing working with, with Bombay Talkings over the years. And Mr. Wishing, he left a huge legacy because he was also a photographer on this, on, on this, on this, on, uh, in the studios. And in the studios, he took, left a legacy of more than 4,000 beautiful photos, most of them, of course, in black white. And they are all in an archive, which, has, which is now administered and, and organized and, and uh, maintained by his grandson, Georg, George. And it's, it's very interesting. And whoever visits Goa and you look for something else to do, Google Wirsching Archives, I can give you the link. It's a kind of museum. And it's very worthwhile to go and see about the history of Indian movie, a Bollywood movies documented by a German who stayed here all his life. Then I would like to, at that time also in the, in the 20s, another young man from Bavaria, Mr. Richter, also wanted to take profit and was looking into do something special in, in the movie sector. So he started a small company doing lightning systems for movies, but he thought I have to do something bigger. So he went to the US, he worked as a waiter, but he went, whenever he had time, he went to the, to the 
studios in US and, see, and wanted to see what they are doing and what might be a future idea beyond doing lightnings. And when he returned, he founded another company in very early, in, in even earlier than the Bombay Talkies, around 1917. And this company is called RRI, Ari, as we call it in India. And they started to manufacture movie cameras. Nobody has heard about them. Nobody has heard about this name before. Even I had to learn it. And until Bernard told me about it, I had also no clue. And, and it was only in, 1990s, in 2017 when here was a huge event where this company was celebrating in India, in Bollywood, 100th anniversary. Then, of course, I looked closer into this Ari and I found out that it was quite a surprise that this small company from that time, starting from, uh, the, the, from Munich, is so well known in India, in Bollywood. And I found out that 85 to 90% market share in all the Indian studios and Indian, Indian movie making. So what did they make different so successful? In former times, you know, the movies have been shot only in studios. All the big movie production have been done in a studio. Some are also today. And you also know the images. You see big cameras running on the wheels, on a track, on, on small carts, or dollies, how they call them. But Ari was very successful in, in introducing and manufacturing now smaller cameras, which could be carried on the shoulder, and which mean a huge difference because you could shoot outside scenes. And uh, the, I also did not know, and, and one of the big movies, well, and then later on, when you go out and, and could have real scenery, uh, it made, of course, a huge difference. And until today, that was a very special uh, market niche of Ari is having a camera which sits on your shoulder and, and uh, can be used much easier than all the others. Of course, also, you know, you see movie making, we all know it made a huge difference. There were 35 millimeters, 16 millimeters. It was black and white, and then we had sound systems coming. And today, everything is digital. And this, come, this movie maker, movie camera maker in, in Germany, has survived until today. And of course, adopted to all this, the, the changes from studios to locations, from still to sound, and of course, from analog to digital. And uh, <clears throat> I think said this, I also looked further into it. And when I went out to see the movie cameras and so on, I also found out that all the equipment you find in the top studios, even in India, comes also from the cradle of the German movie making, mostly located around Bavaria. There's all this kind of crib again, equipment, cranes where camera sits on, dollies, how we can move this, and all these things, uh, which is classical uh, handicraft work, mostly made out of steel today, also with digital functions come there and you can see all of this, you can see in one huge show on movie making and movie theater, which is called Broadcast Interest India, which is a show which takes place normally in Mumbai, of course, of Bali, it's the heart of India movie making, where worldwide exhibitors are showing all the products related to cinema. And you wouldn't believe it, this show is organized by a German exhibition company. As why not more interesting to see that even nowadays, not even giving, helping the birth of modern uh, Indian movie theater, but even today, a German company, a fair organizing company from Nuremberg is bringing together world-class manufacturers of movie equipment in, in Mumbai to show their <clears throat> the latest developments. In, Bollywood, of course, you know, also is a success story. It made a success story abroad. And it's, it's beyond the, the technical aspects. Bollywood movies have conquered all the, the hearts of the people around the world, and also in, in, in Germany. And I still remember in 2008 at the Berlinale, when the first time they had a major uh, show and program with Indian films, everything was sold out immediately. And since that, uh, Indian movies are very important integral part of the, of the show Berlinale, which is the largest film festival in Germany. There is a Berlinale representative here in Mumbai. She is screening the films coming up who are under production and recommend them for the festival. 
and Indian films are also under the, the re, receiving many, many rewards. And there are some generations like myself who grew up with Connor the Barbarian. And uh, that is all I did not know at that time that, that uh, I would meet Kabir Bedi, who was playing Conan the Barbarian one day in my life myself here. And, and as I said, you know, that today Bollywood is a fixed term, a market term, an image brand for India, but it's not only on the movie theater, but it's also for party making. So when you go around, normally you, you not during COVID times, but you could see Bollywood party. Basically, it means that uh, the spirit and the music from Bollywood music also has taken over as a theme and, uh, of party making in Berlin clubs. And it's not something which is so easily fade away. And I, I, I have to make this point because what was this very, because it's, it shows also that India is in a kind of what we call uh, to offer something to the world in a kind of what we call a soft power. Now, you know that there are certain, uh, when, we, when you look to foreign policy, for example, what is a power in the state of a country? So we have normally the hard power, which is military. Oh, if you have a huge military, you have hard power. If you have, and then, then they have the economy. But if you have something on the cultural side which attracts people, music, dance, uh, uh, literature, that is also something which is, goes much, much deeper than the hard power military to, to exert the influence. It's soft power. And there, India added up with Bollywood a new aspect to bring, uh, to win the hearts of civil societies, not only in Germany, but, but all over. I also had the opportunity to, to meet uh, quite a number of actors, but I was looking mostly for German actors here. They might not well known because Bollywood is a huge, huge industries. And, and, but mostly there, there is somebody, I don't know if you've seen his excellent prime minister is a lady called Miss Susanne Bernard. She played uh, Sonia Gandhi in this movie. She has been in a, in a movie which was dealing with uh, 26 11s. Then we have Evelyn Sharma. She also has a show on Deutsche Welle. I don't know if you know her. Claudia Sisla, um, Andy von Eich, and, and others. And others are here that might not have prominent roles, but there's plenty of opportunity for, for also for Germans if they want to make it. And interestingly, you have to make your way up. It's a very difficult business. And the way you make, uh, the way, make your way up is to learn the local languages, because it's not all Bollywood. Normally, you have to start in other regions. In the local languages until you could be accepted and 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 recommend yourself to to Bollywood. Having said this, so I have to at, at like to close that I'm also I'm a I'm a movie enthusiast. I miss going to the movie theater, but on the other hand, COVID gave me gave me and my wife a huge opportunity to watch more movies than I ever could imagine. And, and also, i like to thank all the movie industries, which are beyond the Bollywood scene now, made a lot of very critical movies today, who give a lot of insight into Indian society, which allowed us also to learn in, in things about Indian matchmaking, for example. Fantastic, right? If somebody explains it to you, you would never, never believe it, and, but, but you, you would take it as, a, as, a, as an anecdote. But now when you see it in the movie, and there are many documentaries, and we are very grateful for this new medium coming up, even if it's going to change again, the movie industries, because now scripts are rather written for series in, in Netflix and, and, and other online providers, and not so anymore for the classic movies. But let's see, I am strong belief that we all will go back to normal life as soon as this is possible, because there's one thing we all are longing for, and this will never change in the human nature, that we want to meet each other. And I'm also looking forward to one day so that we also have another meeting again with Rotary at its usual place. And it would be the other way around that I'm not having giving a speech, being hungry, know that I have a good meal first and a talk, and then we have the speech. So I don't want to stand no longer between you and your lunch. And I give back to the president. Thank you so much. Excellent talk. Uh, thank you. We really enjoyed uh, uh, hearing every word and never knew Bollywood uh, had uh, so much in, uh, uh, you know, uh, well, Germany had uh, and Bollywood had uh, already existing ties between them. 
And uh, so I will now take the, uh, ask the audience to ask questions, if any. Uh, do we have any questions from uh, Dr. Mohan? Sushilita has a question. Sushilita, you're on mute. Mr. Morad, first of all, let me say we are really going to miss you. I hope you're not going to leave Bombay very soon. I hope there's still a little more time and we will have your presence at our Rotary meetings. The, the other the question I had was in the collaboration between German and Germany and India, as far as the movies are concerned, uh, I realized that a lot of the hard equipment must have come from Germany. But in the, in the productions itself, was it mainly for Indian consumption or German consumption? Whatever movies that were actually made, were they finally for Indian consumption or for German consumption? That was my, my question. Yeah. I, hello, Suresh. It's a long time since we really met. Yes. So of course, yes. The, equipment, the equipment I was talking about, bought by the India studios, of course, first of all, is always the Indian market. Okay. Right, there are not many movies made particular for the European market, but it's more that then you select movies from the Indian market. First of all, bring it to the festivals in France and Germany and, 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 and other places in Europe. And then of course, secondly, understand there is this, this um, how they call it, um, the companies who are leasing the, who are having the, the rights of, of the movie and then they're leasing it out to the movie theater owners. Okay, okay. So if, if I still remember two years ago in Munich and there was also uh, Indian movie running regular in the program. But this is still very, very few. And normally you have to go to the festivals or you go to now today, which, which opens you the world is the streaming platforms. Okay. So that, but coming back to your question, all what you see here and what I'm talking about is, is I could see all this equipment was here for the studios. And of course, this is mainly for, first of all, Indian okay. movies. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further questions? Uh, Anil Ambo has a question. Uh, doctor, yeah, last year I saw a play here, uh, Devika Rani, and uh, it's about Hamanshu Rai, Roesh, and Anil, uh, you're you breaking up, Anil. Lilith to you're breaking up. Did you see the play that uh, Lilith Dube did on uh, uh, Devika Rani? It talked about this Indo-German background of Himanshu Rai and Roish. She died eventually as uh, Mrs. Roish. No, I, I didn't see this. Sorry. But how is it? I, I recommend it to me. It, Do you know the title of the play? Uh, Devi Karani. Uh, Lille oh, Dubey okay. acted superb, absolutely excellent. But I, did, I, I wanted to know whether it did justice to the reality. No, I, I don't know. It was there, uh, this, uh, Ashok Kumar, the actor, was there. They were talking about the real life story and uh, how the studios moved in those days. No, I don't know. Sorry. And eventually she died as a uh, Mrs. Roish. She left Himanshu Rai. Yeah. And married Roish, and she died as Himanshu Rai. I know. Vika Rani Roish. Okay, I will try to find out about this and have a look and let you know next time. Okay. Sure. Any further questions? 